Today I have 10 tips to help you best start your home gym to hopefully save you some time, hassle, and money. A couple of weeks ago I talked about the top 10 mistakes when starting a home gym, so there will be some overlap with that video, but I've done my best to come up with as many fresh tips as possible for this video. But before we get into the video, hi, my name is Ryan Treadaway, founder of TreadawayTraining.com, where we turn skinny guys into jacked men. If you're interested in working with us to achieve your body transformation goals, click the link down in the description. Number one, decide where your home gym is going to be and take measurements of that space before looking at home gym equipment. Is your gym going to be in a garage or basement? Is it going to be in a spare bedroom? Are you going to have a permanent setup at all? Or is it going to be something that you're gonna to have to store away in a closet after each workout? The amount of space that you have available is going to determine what equipment you can have in your home gym setup. Maybe you don't have the space to physically accommodate a full length barbell and a rack. You might have to go with a short bar and squat stands so that you can store it away when you're done with it. Two, pick the right starting equipment. When starting your home gym, start with high versatility equipment. Don't buy equipment that only has one or two functions. You should be starting with either a barbell, weights, and a rack, or dumbbells. If you have any strength specific goals at all, such as powerlifting, Olympic lifting, or CrossFit, you'll need to go down the barbell route. If you just want to generally get in better shape, put on a little muscle and lose a little fat, you may want to go down the dumbbell route. But if we're being honest, in the end, you're probably gonna want all of that equipment, so it's really just a matter of what equipment you're going to pick up first. Number three, for most people, buy adjustable dumbbells. While fixed dumbbells are amazing, a full set of fixed dumbbells is very expensive and takes up a lot of space. Adjustable dumbbells take up significantly less space and cost significantly less money. There are tons of adjustable dumbbell options that vary both in terms of functionality and price. Two of my favorites are the Iron Master Quick Lock Adjustable Dumbbells and the Nuobel Adjustable Dumbbells. I have a video comparing these, which I will link down in the comments. Four, buy the right bench for you. You may automatically assume that an adjustable bench is the best option because they offer more versatility than a flat bench, but that's not necessarily the case. Like with most things in life, you get what you pay for. If you're on a tight budget, you might actually be better off getting a flat bench rather than an adjustable bench. Adjustable benches have a lot of moving parts and more material in general, which costs money. Therefore, when it comes to adjustable benches, corners have to be cut to hit that lower price point. In other words, cheap adjustable benches won't be as enjoyable to use and won't last as long, so you may end up spending more money in the long run by going with a cheap adjustable bench. Number five, buy all of your starting equipment at once. Workout equipment is big and heavy, which means it costs a lot to ship. There are a couple of equipment retailers that do offer free shipping, such as Rep Fitness and Titan Fitness, but most equipment retailers do not offer free shipping. If you buy all of your starting equipment at once, it can potentially save you hundreds of dollars that you can either save or spend on other equipment. Number six, don't waste money on flooring in the beginning. Stall mats are the best bang for your buck when it comes to gym flooring, and at the time of recording, stall mats are $50 per mat at Tractor Supply. That's just over $2 per square foot. If you have a 13 foot by 13 foot gym space, which is a pretty typical bedroom size, that's $352 for flooring before tax. So that's almost $400 just for the flooring. That's a decent chunk of change that can be spent on actual equipment. If you'll be doing heavy deadlifts and you actually do need something to protect your flooring, you could just purchase two stall mats and add more flooring later. And as a side note, stall mats are definitely what you should be buying without question. Don't waste money on specialty flooring and definitely don't buy those cheap crappy floor foam tiles. 
Number seven, build a DIY cable setup. Yes, build a cable setup, don't buy one. Most of the cable setups you see on Amazon use cheap components and overcharge you for what you're actually getting. If you build one, you can use much higher quality components, which will be much smoother, last longer, and can potentially be cheaper as well. I have a video showing four different cable pulley options, which you can check out down in the description. But if you really just don't want to build one and would rather just buy one, I'll include the link to a decent one down in the description. Number eight, utilize big sales for big purchases. If you're watching this video and there's a holiday around the corner, wait until the holiday to make a big purchase. Many equipment retailers will have sales around major holidays, which can save you a lot of money if you're about to start a home gym or if you're about to add an expensive piece of equipment to your existing home gym. Number nine, buy used, especially when it comes to weight plates. Keep your eyes on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Craigslist, garage sales, or anywhere else that you might find used equipment. This goes double when it comes to weight plates. Weight plates are literally just weight that hangs off the end of a barbell, so there's really no advantage to buying new plates and spending a lot of extra money when you could get used plates that do the exact same thing equally as well. You can save a lot of money buying used. Then you can use the money that you saved on other equipment. Number 10, buy once, cry once. Buy good quality equipment the first time versus trying to skimp, buying something that you don't really enjoy, eventually having to sell it for basically nothing, or even giving it away or throwing it away because no one wants to buy it, and spending even more money later on equipment that you should have bought to start with. Sure, that might mean that you have to wait a little while longer before starting your home gym, but it will be worth it in the long run. Trust me. What tips would you add to the list? Let me know down in the comments. And if you're interested in working with us to achieve your body transformation goals, click the link down in the description. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you next week. We're going to determine the amount of space that you have available is going to determine what equipment you can have in your home gym. Maybe you don't physically have the...